Good morning, Xiao Hui. Good morning, Tai. Good morning, Looks Kevin. Like, uh, Kevin Healy is up oh, there. He is. Okay. Stefan, good evening. Hey there. Good evening. Um, hang on. Something wrong with my video. Okay. I just uh, am finishing up. I'm finishing up the laundry, so uh, it'll be like 10 seconds, but I could hear you guys, so. Okay, that's um, good. Is uh, Friday like a laundry day? Yeah, this is my office. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, I, it just, if I don't do it, then it gets uh, moldy, so. I, I just finished and I just need to hang this stuff outside, so. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I watched the videos, by the way. Or, I, or sorry, I, I promised that I'd rewatch your answers because I didn't understand them the first time. Uh, and then I actually rewatched them. And so it made a lot more sense. So thank you guys for that. Uh, we, which one you are referring to? Last, our last uh, video? Yeah, the last video when you were talking about, <clears throat> sorry, got something in my throat. When we were talking, here, I'll just stop laundry. I'll go do it in a second. Um, when we were talking about uh, the, uh, <clears throat> God, what was it that we were talking about? Now, now I can't even remember. It uh, was how the- How to store uh, transactions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How to, how, to, uh, how to track the address of a transaction. That's mm -hmm. what I was talking about. Yes. Or, and uh, so I rewatched it and it made a lot of sense, but hold on, I'm just so scattered brain. I'm gonna put myself on mute. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'm, I could hear you guys, so I'll okay. be in here in a sec. All right, guys, uh, anything you have in mind, you want to talk or anything for today? For, for today? Any, any questions or? How many people are uh, going to be at uh, CoinGeek New York? I think uh, region. No, I'm, I'm stuck in Singapore. Um, mm -hmm. We're basically... Uh, we really can't, so we can pretty much travel anywhere. The problem is that if I want to come back, I have to quarantine for somewhere between 10 to 14 days in a hotel room um, that I have to pay for, by the way. <laughs> um, so it's, it, it's difficult. It's difficult for me to go out and come back in again um, with, with the quarantining. And sometimes the quarantine has to be done on both ends. So you have like an eight to 10 day quarantine on the other side, get into the country, do your thing, come back um, and then quarantine over here. It's not as bad as people going into China. If you go into China, it's a 21 day quarantine from the outside going in. Um, so if Chinese people travel, they go back home, it's 21 days locked up. Yeah, <laughs> not good. So yeah, um, but I, I, am, I am traveling to Germany while well, I'm hoping, I'm waiting for my visa to be approved. Um, once my visa is approved, I'll be traveling to Germany from the middle to the end of, um, of, of October um, because we have now got sort of a, a green lane thing going uh, between Singapore and Germany. So there's no quarantine on either side. So, you know, I'll get out of the country a little bit. But yeah, I would love to go to CoinGeek. I actually, my plans originally were to go to CoinGeek New York. And I was kind of hoping that these, uh, the, 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 the vaccine craziness is going to, or the quarantine craziness, I should say, was going to get resolved between Singapore and the US. But yeah, here we are, you know. So no, I have to wait for maybe February CoinGeek, see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the same with me. I was super excited to go and, uh... Uh, I just can't go, but uh, they put me on the speaking list just for like a question about Ethereum and stuff. And it's the funniest thing. I, they, I submitted my like default profile picture and it turns out that it was Photoshopped with his suit and the photo. <laughs> <same me. laughs> yeah, it happened to tie too. It, it actually Looking good. It happened to a bunch of people. <laughs> but yeah, but it's, it's actually not, it's not this. Yeah, it, it does look good, but, um, but it just looks, it's so fake that it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of just, it looked ridiculous. And so, um, but it, it wasn't, and I, and then I went and I bought like a nice blazer. So it look, it's gonna look better. But um, I thought it was because I wasn't wearing a suit that they Photoshopped it, but that's actually not the case. They just needed some more space at the bottom 
so that they could put my name on the overlay because it happened to somebody else that had a uh, that was already wearing a suit. So, anyways, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm bummed that we can't go. I was really looking forward to it, but there's always going to be another one. So, and it's great that we could do the uh, the virtual. It's really helpful for me, actually. Yeah, let's see. All right, let's so, hopefully how, just how is travel? How is travel inside the U.S.? Is travel inside the U.S. Uh, okay between the states? You just have to wear the mask. See, yeah. the, the mask, and it bugs me because my whole nose gets congested, and then I can't smell or breathe for like a day uh, after, at least through my nose. I can't breathe through my nose. So I hate wearing the mask. But other than that, it's actually really easy. And uh, But there was a bunch of cancellations. So I went to New York just like a month ago, actually, before the whole vaccine requirements. And um, I think I was on the call during that. And uh, they, you know, it, they, they had a bunch of cancellations. There's a bunch of reroutes. And I asked the flight attendant, I'm like, has it been like this? And she's like, yeah, it's been like a, it's been a mess. She like rolled her eyes. So there's just a lot of unpredictability, but it's, uh, you know, it's functional. So yeah, you could go from state to state without, in the uh, in your requirements, but now New York did that. So in Florida, they actually have a requirement that you can't do the vaccine mandate. So they did the exact opposite policy. So it's we'll see what happens with there. the AB test. Um, which one's yeah. going to be more successful? Yeah, uh, I think. Florida. Yeah, in my in my in my kind of uh, local area, I you know use a public transit to get around and whatnot, and there's. This, uh, you have to wear the mask the entire time you're on the bus. If you're if you're going, you know, so I'm in a small town, but I can get to the to the valley where, where where everything is, and and it takes a few hours on the bus, and and so the whole time there's this robotic voice that comes over the PA system like every 30 seconds because the people don't know how to program their PA system or something, and it's like a face covering required at all times over nose and mouth while riding RVTD, and it's like the most annoying thing. So not only do you have to wear the mask, but you have to listen to this 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 horrible uh, automated disembodied voice uh, that tells you like uh, what to do, and uh, and so uh, yeah, not 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 a good question for me, but but hopefully it all ends soon and and whatnot. Hello, hi, hello, 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 hello. hello. you're back. Yeah. Hello, everybody, how are you today? Good, how about Pretty yourself? Pretty good. Over free, you know, can't complain. Mm -hmm. Always good. What, good, what good. Uh, region are you in? Cape Cod. Nice Cape Cod, region. that's right. Oh, yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah, last time we kind of like I have to cut off because uh, it went a little bit too long and then you are like the last one to join. So if, if there's anything you want to talk about now, you can feel free to kick, kick it off. Sure. Um, do you guys know what tonal Bitcoin is? Have you ever heard of that? I no, say no. it again, a tunnel? Tonal, I think. Tonal, uh, Bitcoin. No, I haven't heard of that. What's that? Does that have anything to do with tone vase? Uh, luckily not. Um, <laughs> no, so there's... Um, That's good. I guess like tonal, tonal is what? Um, hexadecimal. It's like base 16. Um, I guess it's like a, a different arithmetic... Uh, measurement and i was just reading up on it and it said that there was a uh, a tonal bitcoin uh, i don't know i was just thinking as far as like options contracts with bitcoin maybe that would somehow apply but what we need what we really need is something professional that's compliant with uh, the law and securities law anti money uh, law and that kind of stuff and so I think that there'll be a bunch of people that play around with stuff, but then there's going to be some sort of like, uh, it might even be like we're talking about the laws and, you know, uh, whichever one's more functional is going to be the one that becomes a standard. So, it varies, I, though, doesn't it? Like country to country? Yeah, it actually does. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe there'll be some in different countries, but I think people will probably default to whatever is the best. Uh, the best standard and uh yeah i'm curious how that how that whole thing is going to uh come about we talked about this actually uh what was it i was re-watching these videos just because there's so much there's so much information that's shared and it's hard for me to mm -hmm. absorb it all 
Uh, but then I watched it again and I absorbed more and then I watched it again and I absorbed more. And so, um, but yeah, we were talking about it two ones ago. We were talking about the different protocols for uh, shares and stuff. Because if everybody agrees to one of them, then it makes it way more powerful. But you also need flexibility. So you need different ones. So yeah, but um, I think Craig mentioned a while ago, uh, and I think this is a good point. Uh, like, so there are different, for example, uh, stock exchanges and and uh, and and public uh, share markets, so to speak, right? Where you can you know you can take your company public in different countries, and they they each kind of have their own thing. But um, as they emerge and as they develop, uh, they sort of almost compete with one another, and that's why he said something like, and I don't remember which country, but something to the effect that. You can take your business public in, you know, as he would say, where the hell is Dan? Um, but if you do that, uh, no one really cares because the market is not, you know, it's, it's not the one that like people are going to use to to really invest in things because, you know, everybody's going to use the New York Stock Exchange or the, or the CBOE or whatever. And, and, and those and those sorts of those sorts of things are um, are are kind of prominent because of the amount of, of regulation and such that they've been they've been subject or not necessarily regulation but just they have high standards for things right they have ways of doing things that Absolutely. are well established and followed um, and so I think that's why they've become so so I think there is definitely going to be competition and different you know either either legally adopted things by different countries or or, or, or what have you but if the United States for example were to adopt um, just some really crummy thing because it was what, you know, some politician's friend suggested uh, that, that should be the case and, and there's no real, you know, uh, rhyme or reason for it, uh, then perhaps that wouldn't be quite as successful. But if there's some other country who adopts a good and, and well thought through uh, approach to this, I think that that's going to be the market that kind of emerges. And so whoever does that likely will, will uh, end up uh, uh, you know, with, with kind of more capital inflows and whatever else that, that they like to talk about, you know, they pair their, their GDP figures and this stuff. And so, um, and so I, I think that's, that's definitely an aspect of it. There's going to be competition at the beginning and, and that's inevitable. And then hopefully we, uh, we come up with something sensible. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the reason for the regulations is to keep the market efficient and functional. That's if you watch the interviews with uh, Gary Gensler, uh, I th I'm pretty, I don't want to you know, mess this up, but I'm pretty sure one of the things that I heard him talking about is we want to make sure our markets are efficient. And you have to wonder like, what, what does he mean by that? And um, you know, the markets are supposed to coordinate and apply capital to the projects and the companies that are deserving of the money. Mm -hmm. And if it, if, Oh, Craig recommended I read this book. I haven't finished it, but it's called Casino Capitalism. Uh, and it's talking about, so far I've skimmed it, but um, it's talking about, uh, you know, just how our markets are. Like, like uh, imagine with Robin Hood, there's like everybody, you know, everybody has it. It's kind of democratized. So everybody has their investment account. And you've been seeing all these wild things that have been happening with GameStop or whatever, like where the price fluctuates a ton. And that's all driven just by all these memes and stuff on social media, instead of somebody actually sitting down, reading the papers and saying, oh, you actually are, you know, uh, your your business is working in this way and this way. And it's there, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just whoever can get the most attention. It's so precisely it's because the they were a failing business. Form. It's precisely because GameStop was a failing business that people were betting against it, shorting it. Same with, I mean, think like uh, people selling disc video games and people selling, um, uh, what was it? The other one, uh, the, the entertainment company. I forget which, which other one, but AMC? those two meme stocks were like, yes, AMC. AMC. Okay. Um, it's precisely because they were bad companies. And then it was like, oh, let's, let's, let's uh, buy these stocks and, and buy, you know, leveraged positions and all this stuff because 
oh well we're gonna put a uh, we're gonna put a uh, uh, a wrench in the machine and you know uh, down with the evil capitalist who's 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 actually making a wise bet so it's actually negatively correlated and and and, and for that reason even more destructive um, to to the smooth functioning of markets it's it's the opposite of a smooth functioning market because they're taking things and and and, and looking at them as um, let's find the most uh, the most the, the business that is, that is that is worst off that everybody's betting against for a good reason you know the, the wise people are betting against and then let's get together and make those people who have made good bets lose money so we're taking exactly. money away from people who know what they're doing and giving it to people who speculate and uh, and and whatnot and that that is the exact opposite of what capitalism does when it works correctly at least right, in my view. You're supposed I to think, be allocating the capital to the efficient companies. And so now it's this mob rule and takeover. So I'll, I'll let you talk. Sorry for interrupting that. Stefan, go for it. No, that's okay. I, I think that you'll always have maxima and minima where people try to game the system. And in, in scenarios like that, um, a few people will make, will make out like, like, um, like, like fiends. And then everybody else will come to tears, right? Because at the end of the day, there is still no underlying value. That's not it's going to tank um, regardless of how people are trying to prop it up. Um, it's going to run out of steam and then people are going to lose a lot of money. So I think that the system is self-correcting as long as uh, you don't get some sort of external input that distorts the system. And typically, these external inputs that, um, that, that destroy the efficiency of the system come in the form of, um, of, of, of the government deciding that, oh, no, somebody uh, must be bailed out. We need to protect somebody's uh, bad bets. Um, so let's 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 print some money and, and, and help these guys out. Um, then when you get these random, so I would say that that government interference is probably the bigger problem that I have with the efficient operation of markets. Um, uh, market participants themselves who try to push the market one way or another by betting their own money, right? That, that I'm fine with because they, they're the only ones who are going to come to tears there. It's usually when the government invents money out of thin air to go and distort the market that all of us lose because we didn't get a hand in that decision to start with. Um, and it's ultimately our money that gets devalued um, en masse, um, essentially for what the government deems to be the greater good. So we all get socialized into this decision um, and, you know, yeah, that, that I've got a big problem. Yeah, I think in the long term, it's going to yeah, work out. Sure. But it's always the same, right? The market can, uh, can be uh, irrational much longer than you can stay in uh, solvent. Solvent, so. solvent, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that as well. Okay. Yeah, but, the, but my, my point was, is that, um, and then I'll stop talking, we'll go on to something else. But the point was, is that, regulations when they work should help to make the market be more efficient. But I think, I think if you look at how codes, when they're designed well, how they come into being, it's because somebody has a really good way of doing it and then everybody copies them. So like, look at like the building codes or whatever, like, you know, there's a code and architecture that you have to have a plug uh, like an outlet on every wall now in California. So like in some of the old buildings, like there's not an outlet anywhere in the room and I can't design my furniture well. I was like, well, where am I going to put this? There's no outlet over here. And so, but now there's a code that you have to have an outlet on every wall. And um, so, you know, if, if there's a good thing that works, then everybody will uh, follow that and then it gets put into policy. But uh um, so somebody's going to create a token protocol that works well, and then I think it'll come into being. But uh, I don't know enough about all these. I, I'm not. I'm not a good architect of that because I just don't have enough experience. I don't think. But I'm researching and learning about it. And actually, there's a uh, Craig posted something in the public uh, made in that ICU about uh, this idea for having a token protocol that discouraged short-term trading, which was interesting, mm -hmm. but I need to review it more. I, again, 
we have we share so much information that I'm I'm mm -hmm. almost like overwhelmed by the amount of information. Okay. But uh, I, I've been like a maniac trying to absorb it all, so I'm still absorbing it. But um, yeah. So the, and that's kind of the same with the mid and at SU. We've already yeah. shared so much that I'm I'm still going back and reviewing it. So sorry if I don't have much to say because I'm still reviewing the old stuff. But I enjoy this. I enjoy these conversations. So. I mean, that could be a, a good a good means to filter out. Uh, um, uh, like we could use the, uh, the the boost pow idea to just uh, mm -hmm. add priorities to different things, and we could all kind of boost information by voting on it with that uh, with proof of work. So, so maybe uh, someone could build a little, uh, and I might I might do this when I get the time, but a little bot on Slack or something that allows us to sort of mine on certain posts and um, and and add you know proof of work by finding a better nonce that like when you hash the nonce with the post then it adds more uh, zeros to the front and uh, gives it more sort of energy. Um, and we could show uh, like this, this is valuable and should be read first in order of, well, this is what was, um, this is what was, this is what, you know, people have invested the most in promoting. Um, those kind of things are, Absolutely. Uh, are hopefully, hopefully we can, we can get those in operation and uh and uh get the you know because because yeah. that way we can we can begin to filter out like it's not going to be perfect at the beginning because the information we're working with is so immense that we're not even going to be able to canvas all of it in order to even know what to vote for um so we will erroneously bias towards recent things as well as things which um we like uh as the people who, who create the system but over time the kind of uh, wisdom of the crowd, so to speak, would, would come into force and more people would vote for more things and, and the knowledge that is inherent in that would be greater. And eventually we would, we would have a ranking system for all information and uh, that would be kind of cool. Um, so uh, if anyone wants to help me build that, then uh, you know, mm -hmm. it, would be, it would be fun. I, have a, I, have a, I think uh, I, the user interface needs to be better because it's a stream right now where things just go and it's just like there's constant new stream mm -hmm. and the newest is always on the bottom. And uh, this is also the problem with social media is when they introduced the feed and then there was too much information. And so then they created these algorithms to start showing what they thought you would like most because there's so much information. So my point here is that there needs to be a different interface than what we have in order for it to work properly. Uh, like it needs to be like those word clouds where whatever's the most important topic is visually the most dominant in addition to not just proof of work, you know what I mean? Like you do the proof of work, like you're saying, which is a big part of it, but then you also have to reflect that in the user interface. So that, that's the kind of, and so I'd love to help you guys with that kind of stuff. I don't know how we do it and how it will work, but my skill set is uh, user interface design. And I spend crazy amounts of time doing just these tiny little animations. Like it's been, I'll, I'll spend a week just to get this transition from this page to this page right. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people really understand that, uh, that, that, you know, what I mean, uh, they don't understand the value of that, or they think, oh, it's a waste of time. But actually, what happens is, is that it keeps people like they understand how to use the product without any instructions. Yeah, because when they click there, and then it animates from here to here, they automatically into like intuitively know, oh, if I do this, it'll go back to that page, because there's a transition between so anyways, um, so I would, I would help, but I can't, I don't understand the technical stuff. I'm learning, but I don't understand a lot of the technical stuff that you guys understand as much, but I am, a, I uh, enjoy doing user interface. And so, uh, so that, that would be how we'd work together. I do user interface. You guys could do some of the more technical stuff. I, I think that, so just, just uh, maybe uh, for, for a comment there, um, Kevin, um, I've, I've actually spent a lot of time building um, large scale e-commerce um, websites and um, running engineering teams that, that build those. So I have a really good appreciation for the metrics that drive the, um, the, the bottom line, right? So in the fun, how, how to get people to, to convert in the funnel, for example. So um, yes, I have a huge appreciation for the kind of work that you're doing because I know the value of that and how that translates into dollars and cents at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, that, so yeah, it's, it's always great to have folks like you because it's, it is like you say, sometimes an underappreciated job, 
but it is something that makes a massive amount of difference um, in user experience uh, and then ultimately in the bottom line, right? How people convert or experience your product. So yeah, and yeah. also like if you get the user interface right and you also, you get all the little bugs and kinks out of it. So there's no like way of falling into some like weird bug. If you get all that right and polished, then you have way less uh, customer support that you have to deal with and way less training that you have to deal with. So you save, you may make money because it's less friction to go through the funnel, like you said, but then you also don't have to do as much on the education front or the customer support calling. How do I do this? Because I can just figure it out intuitively. Mm -hmm. So oh, yes. uh, it does, it actually now that, yeah, it does save money in other parts of the organization. I wrote an, sorry that I uh, keep on rambling, but I wrote an email after Apple Music was first released. So they basically, Apple bought Beats by Dre and then there was just this mess of a product. They released an Apple Music and it was so bad. And they, and I wrote an email explaining like, what about customer support? Like you're gonna like, because then they introduced, well, we're introducing this brand new customer support. I'm like, just get the product right before you, you know what I mean? Before you release it, mm -hmm. I sent them an email. Uh, so, cause yeah. And so I'm just confirming what you said that, and I didn't even realize this until, uh, you said it, but it does save money if you design it well. So it is worth just, it. Uh, yeah. just I, I, know, I want just I know when go Kevin, for it, go for it. yeah, very quick. Did, when Kevin said that he sent email to Apple, he meant uh, he sent it personally to Tim Cook actually, and Tim Cook replied. So. Just well, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. I I sent it. You well, show I me the them. email, right? You show well, well, me well, the email. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but that that he he responded to one where I complimented them on the okay. Apple Store in France. Compliment. So I, oh, okay. I just got the. I I went. Yeah, he went to. Uh, I I was in Paris, and the Apple Store that they just had opened was the coolest thing ever. And I sent an email, and he responded saying. Uh, uh, I shouldn't. I I shouldn't have said this publicly because I don't like. Mm -hmm. I don't like to say this stuff publicly. But I mean, it's nothing bad, and I'm sure people people release emails all the time. But uh, but yeah, he just said you're welcome, and uh, I was like, whoa, I got a response because I I ever since I was little, uh, there was all this controversy around Steve Jobs uh, responding to emails, and so I'm like, well, they must read them, and so then I started sending them. And so I've had a habit of that. I try and be respectful and not spend too or not send too many, but it's uh, and it's also kind of a bad thing because it's like oh you can just text them right there. And so if you're in a weird mood or something, you might say something crazy and re then regret it later. But um, but yeah, I've always I've always shared feedback because I like personally getting feedback from my customers on my apps too. So I've yeah, always thought that they the would best. appreciate mm -hmm. feedback. But you just have, you want to be you want to be respectful and trying to organize it. And I should be more respectful sometimes, but it's difficult if you're just upset. So, but I'm sure they have filters and you can filter out the crazy stuff. But, um, but yeah, so I, that's what I said is I, I, I've been, and then the other one is I wanted an away message. I've been emailing and I'm sure they don't get all of them. They only see a few sometimes, but um, I've been, I was emailing people, the feedback team and all copying people like that. And uh I just wanted there to be an away message so that I wasn't getting bombarded with messages when I was in the middle of other stuff. And so, uh, but now they finally have the focus mode. I don't know. I'm sure other people requested it too. So I'm not taking credit for that idea, but uh, I just want, I wanted there to be an away message on um, just like they had back in instant messaging days where you can put up an away message, say I'm at dinner or I'm, you know, doing my morning routine, brushing my teeth, going to the bathroom, using the shower, like, but instead you're doing all that stuff and you're just getting texts all the time. And it's like, holy crap. And then like, well, why didn't you immediately respond? And it's like, cause I was in the bathroom. It's like, no, it's cause I said something controversial and you needed to think about it instead of, and it's like, oh my God, it's just like, it's just such a mess uh, to not have an away message. And it, it had been creating issues in my personal life. And so that's why I was requesting, can we please have an away message? And uh, so that when you need to have some personal space, you can, you know, put it up saying, I'm not available right now. Please try back again later. Mm. So. Um, so I've got, 
I want to back up a little bit to something about the uh, the proof the boost proof of work for upvoting. Um, I want to play devil's advocate a little bit, and then I also want to to make a suggestion or maybe throw a little um, stone in the bush, as we say. I don't. Do you guys have that that saying? Throw a stone in the bush. Of course. No. I'm, I'm makes translating. Sense. I'm translating directly from a Maybe from in expression in my, yeah. in my native language. And it basically means you throw a stone in the bush to see what jumps out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, Stir things it's, anyway, up. Stirring kind pot. of like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I Go ahead. Felt stirring in the pot is kind of a negative connotation. But anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's keep it positive. Of work, right. So, Proof of work um, for for uh, for upvoting uh, essentially means that somebody had to spend money to get satoshis to buy uh, a proof of work token and then use that proof of work token to upvote the system. Um, can we shortcut that scenario where we just use the satoshis or the money directly mm -hmm. to do the upvoting with? Um, and do we really need the the, the boost? Or at the boost. Let me not use boost as an example. Let me just say, do we really need a general proof of work token um, other than the Satoshi as a substitute for the upload mechanism? Um, or, or is that just adding an unnecessary layer of direction into it? So that is sort of me playing the devil's advocate. Uh, no, I agree. With, of, I agree with you. Yeah. I think I think if we could just use um, uh, BSV directly or Satoshi's directly, then that mm -hmm. would be that would be pro probably a lot easier. That's that's probably better. Yeah, I don't want to harp on boost too much because I don't want to because I, I, I don't really understand what what it is that Daniel is trying to accomplish with the product. So I don't want to use it as an example of something that I you know. Well, I, I, I didn't know you're talking about. I didn't know you're talking about boost. I need to uh, study the thing. But th what might have happened was is that they wanted to have uh, a way of making money off of it, and that was the common way of monetizing. Yeah. They're, they're but they're trying to monetize protocols back in the Ethereum days, and one of it was you had to use this token, and then we'll save you know thirty percent, and then the, the rest goes. But I think that's kind of a silly way of doing it. I think it's better just to have a protocol that's directly using BSV. But then the question is, who's actually incentivized to create this thing? I was actually thinking about this that this morning. And I think the people that are incentivized to create these protocols are people that own a lot of BSV and just want people to be using BSV. And so whether it's Enchain or uh, Tall or whoever, like they're the ones that, well, and just everyday people that own, you know, I don't own as much as them, but if, if we, so if the people that want other, you know, they want people to use BSV and they're the ones that are incentivized to come up with these protocols and then just have the development teams review them and release them. Um, and then we don't need to have this extra layer. Yeah. I, so the, the, the reason why I also come back to this idea of um, secondary proof of work tokens, right, is because and you guys can, can, can jump in here and challenge me on my understanding of this, uh, please do so. Um, I kind of feel like secondary proof of work tokens that are not Satoshi's are um, sort of a, a different take on the labor theory of value, meaning that um, this thing is supposed to be valuable because work has been put into it, uh, which, can, which to me at least misrepresents the idea of proof of work because proof of work it's not this thing like what I hear a lot of people say, which is it's spent energy that is converted into value. Um, for me, proof of work in the Bitcoin system is purely a signaling mechanism that determines um, consensus or that resolves a state. Um, or not resolve state, sorry. I want, to, I want to use a very specific term here to be precise about it, uh, or at least precise about what I mean, which is to say that it is a signaling mechanism that allows for, um, for the distributed consensus to resolve itself to a single uh, source of truth. Uh, and that decision on what the single source of truth is, 
is a consequence of this of this proof of work signaling mechanism that is used and that the signaling mechanism is completely independent and doesn't really have anything to do with um with with the with, energy with, uh, with value with energy your value creation itself yeah um, and also with the understand proof of work and also, I was I was talking about this in the other one, and I just want to reconfirm this in case people don't understand, because uh, I mentioned and Craig said that proof of work is the peacock's tail, and if you don't understand the story behind peacock's tail, then you might not understand what that means. <laughs> but it's so the females, female peacocks, and this happens in all species, like whether it's lobsters or little fish. Jordan Peterson has a really good uh, podcast about this. It's called. Um, value uh higher or competence hierarchies uh it's a podcast i've listened to it maybe 10 times because it's so good but he mm -hmm. talks about it how these little fish or whatever they'll create this mosaic so the male fish will create a mosaic in the sand and then all the women come the whip the women fish come and they look at it mm -hmm. and they judge it and they go look at the other one they judge it they look and they pick the one that's the most you know complicated or the best or whatever i guess for them i don't know but the best and so they, they're they're and the peacock's feather is the same thing so the male peacock has this huge unnecessary so to speak it's wasteful of energy he could have been using it for his immune system or whatever but instead he creates this huge peacock's tail um as a display to signal to the um females that he's uh, fit because uh, he can support such a large expenditure of energy. And so um, by somebody burning up a ton of energy, and I don't even want, you know, that's the energy part. So you have all these miners. And then as they build this huge warehouse of all this stuff, they have, they have had to buy it. They've had to transport it somewhere. They have to have power consumption. It's a signaling device that then shows that this person is in this location and they're fit because if they were doing something illegal, then the government, because they're so obvious and they're so present that the government could shut them down right then and there. You see what yeah. I mean? And mm -hmm. so it's yeah, a guy... way of signaling that they are actually compliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like also, a demonstration you know... of loss of the... Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, basically, uh, I'm saying that the government, I think the you know, correct analogy is the tiger here, right? So if you are like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if you are not, uh, unhealthy, but you're still growing all these unnecessary feathers, you're going to get caught and uh, eaten. Your gene is going to disappear from the pool, right? So exactly. similar here, right? You're going to wipe out yeah. if you like uh, do something not honest. Exactly. And then proof of stake is getting rid of that. And then they could be anywhere. They could be on a little laptop controlling their funds in the middle of whatever. And it, it's like, and then it's, it can't be compliant anymore. It can't be enforced. And I think- Where's the tiger? A lot, well, the, well the, no tiger. there is- Right. There's no, no tiger. tiger. Right. So, mm -hmm. I, yeah. So we have to follow the evolutionary biology thing. It's like, it's a natural law. It just works. I don't know. You see it in all species. And so why not? But, but- but my point was, is that it's an efficient way of, um, of filtering noise is, uh, and so there's all, you know, it's kind of taboo to talk about, but all the gold digger pranks and whatever that you can watch on YouTube, it's like mm -hmm. the women will completely ignore them. And then they have the Lambo and they say, oh, you know, and like, it's That's just, you can't blame yeah. them. You, yeah. you can't even, you can't blame them, but they just, they just get, they get bombarded by so many people that they need a way of just filtering out the noise. And if you have a big feather or a big Lamborghini, then it catches their attention. But people are very resentful if it's a fake Lamborghini or it's rented or whatever. <laughs> and that's that's when you have a breakdown. <laughs> that's when you have a breakdown of the system. And that's what I've been saying I, a lot is that we need to make sure, and this is why it's great that we have the ways of catching fake designer purses and stuff. It's because if this whole thing works, then you just need to make sure that the people that have these really big feathers are the ones that are actually following the rules the most. It's a it, the, the rented Lambo is a, is a dishonest signal, in other words, yeah? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Well, so is makeup or so is uh, all sorts of different things. But hair extensions, uh, 
women will put like these things in their hair. There's like a big uh, YouTube, that guy, the, the famous YouTuber. I don't watch all of this, but I've seen a few, but it was uh, Logan Paul. And they had on the security footage, they were like flipping and one of his girlfriends had all this hair fall out. And he's like, what's this? <laughs> and he pulls it up. It was really funny. But, um, but um, not an honest yeah, so minor. Like, you know, we, yeah. if it's, uh, yeah, it's not, not an honest minor. It's, uh, it's a mm -hmm. fake, but people do that with make, I mean, it's, it's very common it's with all sorts of things. And so, but if, but what we want to do is make sure that it's authentic, you know, authentic. And so, um, yeah, you can't, yeah, I, you I don't really fake, you can't really fake SHA 256 proof of work. Um, that's, yeah. that's the benefit, right? It's mm -hmm. something that's, that's, that's uh, pretty much impossible to fake. You, you either did the math or you didn't do it. And there's only one way to actually get it done. And that's the expansion of a vast amount of energy at this point. Unnecessarily, I should say, I don't think that you need that much energy because it, anyway, the, the market, the market will, 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 will sort mm -hmm. itself out on that one as far as I'm, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, it's interesting to say, I mean, we, we, we have the, we have the idea that this, uh, this can be, this, this is, you know, a waste of energy or something. And that's, and that's, that's interesting, but it's because it's such a good signal, it requires a lot of energy. And if we didn't have that much energy, then it wouldn't be as good of a signal. So in that case, um, because of the, the sort of way of, of validating, um, then we could do that. Now, if I were to write a script, uh, like in maybe even a script contract for this, uh, and I don't, I don't understand the, uh, the, 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 I actually don't even pretend to understand the idea of having a proof of work token because you can't tokenize, you, you can't tokenize, um, proof of work until you know what is being worked on and, and have already done the process of, of, of calculating it. So you can't have a token that represents a future uh, proof of work uh, unless you're, unless you're uh, know the value of what's already been, what's already been done, because in order to redeem that token, you know, you'd have to, I guess, do the work and, and make it, make it happen. But um I mean, I guess, well, I'm trying to think about that. Maybe, maybe that is something that could be done, but I think using native Satoshis is, is, is um, sort of the, the, the way to go there for the simple reason that what I can do is create an, a locking script with a number of Satoshis in it, right? As a bounty or a reward for unlocking it. And that locking script contains the message and it contains a, a check that makes sure that the hash, you know, um, sort of that the hash uh, contains a certain number of leading zeros and that they just provide a nonce when they've mined, uh, when they've kind of done some work to, uh, to, to you know, mine whatever message that is. And uh, so uh, then they can redeem the script and, and we could even have multiple redeem paths. So depending on the number of zeros you get, that, that, that changes the number of Satoshis that you're, uh, you're allowed to actually redeem and the rest must be sent back to a change address uh, from the original sender or something. So, so based on the amount of proof of work done, um, you know, it could be, it could be, but then, uh, you know, there could be time incorporated as well. So if I do a very small amount of proof of work, uh, the transaction that redeems that cannot be valid until, you know, a year from now. So that way we know that, um, uh, there really wasn't very much interest, but if I were to do a medium amount of proof of work, the transaction could be redeemed within three months. And if I were to do a large amount of work, then it could be redeemed within, you know, one, one month or something. And, and that way we get the actual, we, we, we create a thing that, that, that actually creates the, um, the incentive around the, the actual amount of interest. Because if I only do a small amount of work um, and then have my transaction that can't be broadcast for a year, somebody could undercut me and do the medium amount of work and broadcast it, broadcast it after six months. And uh, someone else could do even, even more. So the point is, Either we spend too much energy on work and broadcast the transaction soon and, and waste energy, or we don't spend enough energy and someone else could undercut. And so therefore the incentive is to create a balanced, like actually do the correct amount of work associated with what the market deems the value of this message to be. Uh -huh. So I wrote in programs to this effect and, and, uh, and I just think it's interesting that we could, we could do that stuff in, in, uh, in native Bitcoin script and, 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 and by extension in, uh, in script to have a contract that that balances all of those things. So time, how, how much interest is there in doing this work from the market, and then uh, the amount of work done uh, relating to the amount of Satoshis uh, uh, redeemed. That would be a way of, of actually creating an incentive to produce the correct amount of work 
ascribed to what the market believes is the correct value of the message being uh, being uh, kind of uh, uh, appraised, if you will. Yeah, and let's stop calling, and I agree with that. And so, and my realization was, let's stop calling it a waste of energy because it's not, it's a signaling device. Mm -hmm. And if you are wasting energy, then you're going to get cut down by the tiger. Yeah, you see what I mean? Or the market, if you, yeah. If you are, or the market. So if you are truly signaling more than you can support, so if you are the guy that has, you've extended yourself, you've rented your car or, or you leased mm -hmm. your car instead of buying it, it's way over, it's 90% of your net worth instead of only like 1% of your net worth, then you'll be exposed eventually. And so it's not, it's not, signaling is not a waste. Signaling is an efficient way of matching up with people. So it's oh. not a waste. I, I agree with that. Uh, I do want to make one, one remark uh, about what you were saying about locking up, uh, essentially requiring having a essentially a token that has a predetermined um, um, hashing difficulty as the unlocking mechanism. Um, that idea of that token getting value from the, the, the hash power that gets expended to unlock it um, skirts very dangerously close to the labor theory of value for me but maybe there is something that I missed that I don't quite understand there. And the reason why I say this, right, is because I also want to make the comment about the, the amount of SHA-256 that's currently being expended for, across all forks of Bitcoin. For me, it's a mass, it's massively distorted amount of value. It's massively distorted amount of energy relative to the value that is actually being created in the world for people, right? So there's this massive distortion you have huge amount of um, energy being expended for relatively small amount of value creation, that distortion will correct. That, that is my belief. Mm -hmm. um, until it corrects, we're going to be living in this, in this weird dystopia, right? And the reason why it is, 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 it, it's, it's grown as lopsided as it has is basically because of Ponzi economics, right? Lots of, lots of new money gets pulled in to prop up the dollar value, which drives up the incentive for more hash to come in to mine uh, more, more, uh, more of these coins as the, the block reward, but the actual value in there is not, is not really there, right? So there's a massive distortion in the market. Um, we know it has to come to tears at some point unless the, the value creation catches up with the amount of expended SHA-256 hash because there is not an infinite amount of money that can just keep pouring into the system to prop up the, the valuation, right? Real value has to be created within the, the network that is being supported by this, uh, by this uh, energy expenditure at the end of the day. Um, so yes, it's an honest signal, um, but it won't become brutally obvious to people just how honest the signal it is until that correction occurs. Until that correction occurs, people will keep buying into the Ponzi economic system that we currently have, that, that, that it's led to this thinking that there is, um, that there is, that, that Satoshis are energy converted into value, right? Which is what I see quite often being posted uh, all over the place. I mean, I would say sure. Satoshis, are, Satoshis are a demonstration of the loss of opportunity cost of what that energy could have been done, uh, could have could have created, but I agree with you. I think it might be a long-term signal that hasn't, it might, you know, over the, you know, over the span of a couple decades or so, you know, and this is an appeal to kind of the, the maybe a fallacy of, of, oh, well, we don't know because it's just, you know, you could say that about anything, but, um, but the, the sort of value that, that is ascribed is, is, not near what it needs to be. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's something that we'll have to, like you said, originally see what, see what happens. I, I was also, uh, uh, you can go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, is it, is it just marketing BSB and what, and what its utility is versus everything else. And then the ship will fall where they fall. and. I think, well, let's I, go ahead. To answer what you just said, uh, 
and I was watching the Elon Musk interview. He was just interviewed about it. And he said to think about money as a information network, right? And so um, what should happen is that, and I said this a while back, that if you think about like money as like a form of reputation, um, because if you profit, theoretically, then you've helped somebody. Okay, so, and Charles Koch has this saying, good profit, bad profit. Let's just assume that all profit is good profit, which isn't the case, but let's just assume that. Okay, so assume that the money is only going to people that are helping people, then whoever has the most money is the one that has helped the most. And so, um, so money is an information network that is supposed to be allocating uh, capital to whoever is helping the most. That's that's what it's about. And so if uh, if that gets distorted, and that's what Stefan was saying, where people aren't helping, they're doing shady things, but then we just print money and give it to them to bail them out, uh, that's not that's not sustainable. And so these other systems that are doing that, they're just not sustainable. And um, they will eventually collapse. So uh, so what will happen is as long as we make sure that our money is honest, it's like what Craig said, Bitcoin is honest money. I should say BSV is honest money. And as long as we do our best to keep it honest and we don't distort our own currency, but we keep it honest, then it will become the most desired currency eventually. Did Craig, did Craig work for, uh, for with Bitcoin Cash before they split? Was it, were they all together after the fall? Yeah, because Bitcoin initially? it's always a uh, fall of the original, original Bitcoin protocol, right? Because when before the BSV, BS, BCH split, there was only for big blocks, there's only BCH4. So that's, that's how it evolved, yes. But then the BCH guys, they don't want to well, do the real Bitcoin. So they kind of split up. Now I hear this. I hear this. That, you know, they they want to do something different. They want they want Satoshi vision. What 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 do they want to do differently? I mean, I'm sure I had to do something with like the node software, the mm -hmm. mining software that was going to the nodes. It was probably something there to like maximize their profiting. Maybe that's my assumption. But mm -hmm. is it? I don't know. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't know if they even go to the extreme. It's a bit. I, I think. Uh, it, for my understanding, because I have witnessed the split when I, f when I went to the first coin gig, it was the BCH because there was no BSV. All the BS BCH people there, Roger Ver, Jihan Wu, they're all there. So we were there and everybody was happy. And then I kind of feel, even as time went on, we, you kind of feel it's more like a philosophical difference than I, I think it's a right. much less than a technical issue because there are a lot of them is like a, a proponents of anarchy, and uh, exactly do whatever you want. This is the thing. It, 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 that's the number one. And the second thing is, I don't think they are going to be, uh, you know, scale it because they say they're uh, proponents of big blocks. Look at the blocks they have now. I think the biggest they mine is like eight megabytes, right? And uh, the, uh, so it, I think the number one is probably the, the defining feature because if you we, we want it to be law compliant, right? Because they don't want to do like a, right. you know, anything they want, even if you have assassin market, you have a drug market, that's fine to them, right? They just, I think the number one issue with split is almost like in that inevitable. Once it's split, now oh, I'm actually oh, glad yeah. because we are kind of like, a, we don't have to be dragged on, right? <laughs> imagine now they're still, still stuck in with us. And then when, when we go to like, a, can we imagine we have two gigabyte blocks? They'll be go crazy. Don't spam the network or whatever, right? It, I, it just slow us down. Yeah, I think that the the yeah yeah th that debate for me was in part technical, uh, but I think that it was probably eighty percent political. That mm -hmm. that bun fight, eighty percent political and twenty percent technical. Yeah, the technical people thing using, is only like a two opcos, two opcos or three. Yeah, people would, uh, I think like that, a minor, two minor. I think that people were using the technical differences mm -hmm. uh, of opinion essentially to fuel their political agendas on yes. both sides. You know, I'm not saying one mm -hmm. side or the other. I think both sides are guilty of this. Uh, on the BSV side, uh, as well as on the BCH side at the time, were guilty of basically leveraging the technical dis uh, disagreements 
do further their own um, their own ideological agendas about what they wanted Bitcoin to be for the future. Um, I will say this though, from what I know about anarcho-capitalism, I think that BSV is a better anarcho-capitalist implementation <laughs> than, um, than, than BCH is actually. And the reason I say that, right, is because um, I, I think about things in, in the way that um, I want the technology that I use to be ideologically agnostic. I don't want the ideology to be a reflection or rather to, to for the technical implementation to be a reflection of, of any one particular ideology. Um, the, if, if you achieve that, it means that you can, it's basically a bring your own ideology technology in the same way that the internet is a bring your own ideology implementation, right? Uh, TCP, the TCP IP protocol is completely independent from whether or not you run um, a, a, a Marxist website or mm -hmm. a, 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 a like a pro capitalist or Austrian economics website. Doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. You can and people do do illegal things with with um, with TCP IP um, and uh, but they do it at the higher level of the higher protocol. Uh, the uh, and the reason why I, I think it's a bad idea is not just from the point of view of the government might shut you down. There is actually a good technical reason. Um, for some weird reason, I forget the law. It's not a law, law, but you know how, how uh, programmers like to call themselves engineers when they're not really. So I'm one of those programmers. And, there is, and, and, and because we are engineers, we can have laws like physicists. So there is this particular law, um, which is... Something to the effect, I'm going to describe what the thing does, and I completely forget the name of this thing, which is that typically what happens within any organization is, is that the technical implementation ends up being a reflection of the organizational hierarchy in the code. Um, and that is generally considered to be a bad thing because the technical implementation of your um, of your, you, you don't want the tech to end up, or your product to end up reflecting your internal business to the customer. You need to be serving the customer need at the end of the day, whatever that is. Um, and I, I forget the, the name of this this, this uh, law. It's, it's, it comes more from the, the from information theory and the business side of things. Um, is, it, uh, uh, around... like a, is it Living Systems with uh, Peter Hinchins? He wrote a lot about this sort of thing. Um, it doesn't ring a bell. No, it doesn't. I'll, I'll, once there's a lull in the conversation, I'll do a quick bit of Googling to see if I can rediscover the, the actual name for this thing. But the reason why I bring this up, right, is because, like I say, I don't want uh, my Bitcoin implementation to be uh, reflective of a particular ideology on the technical level, which simply means that whatever ideological bend I have, and we all have them, I can pretty much do and implement that with what I can implement my ideology, but that also means that I take personal responsibility for it, right? The responsibility isn't farmed out to whoever is operating the, 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 the network, because if the ideology runs counter to uh, name your favorite government that, that doesn't like one thing or another, if, the ide if my particular ideology runs counter to a particular government's idea, all of a sudden now you've become a target for government interference in the technology. Whereas if my business, which is layered on top of it, runs counter to a particular government, I can maybe do some Tai Chi and, and skip jurisdictions. <laughs> but then, it, then it's me, right? Then it's me. I'm the guy responsible for it. Uh, it's, it's got nothing to do with the internet. Um, or with the web. You should uh, just uh, decentralize yourself. So that way you can <laughs> avoid the, any jurisdiction. Oh yeah, we're everywhere and nowhere at the same time until we send out a tweet on Twitter that says, uh, please send back the $90 million of, of compound that was just lost or else you're gonna get doxxed. <laughs> but no, 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 we're everywhere at the same time and, and also nowhere. Um, you can definitely trust us. Yeah. I mean, not us, because us as, as people, but you can trust this 
code that is everything. Law, code is law. And yeah, they were yeah, going yeah. to report you to the police if you don't return the funds. Uh -huh. But uh, one minute ago, they were saying, we don't need law, you know, mm -hmm. we don't need- Oh no, you're actually, you're actually gonna have to pay taxes on your, on your, on your $20 million uh, air, airdrop. Uh, I don't know if you guys read about that. Uh, I read it on the news this morning uh, that, that Compound had a, a bit of a, a snafu with their with their thing. And so people have like $20 million that they shouldn't have now and, and whatnot. It's just kind of interesting. It. I have it. I'll, I'll check it out. <laughs> but um, just, just I think the whole thing, uh, the whole thing, and also I want to say that theory of Bitcoin, the one, what is law, that's one that I've watched several times and I really like that one. Because it talks about, I think, it, you know, if you want to have long term commerce uh, where you can trust that your investments are going to be sound and stuff, yeah. uh, then you need to have you need to have law. And that's sort of where it comes about. And you'll see like Disneyland or something they wanted to open in a different country. But they say is what's the political situation? Is it stable enough? Uh, and if it's not stable enough, they won't do it because they don't know if they're going to keep their investment long term. So um, law comes about as a way of protecting long-term investments was sort of the way that I, uh, was one of the messages I took from that presentation. And so it's important to have good law. I mean, yeah, it's fairly useful for that. I mean, also, you know, making sure that mad people don't murder each other, but that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah, that's- uh, it, has, uh, it has its excuses, I, 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 I guess. I, I, that's a defining feature. I would have never- from, uh, uh, Hamas and uh, BCH, right? Because they think it's uh, completely mm -hmm. everything is voluntary. You just, uh, you know, if uh, big, big guys with big guns come in to grab your stuff, you know, you just take him to some kind of like a private court. But uh, why would they even go there? That's never answered somehow. It's uh, just, oh, that's just, uh, you know, minor details. You know, everybody is uh, altruistic. Yeah, and they exactly. Just, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you just, like you just, you just, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. You you are you finished my sentence. What I was going to say is I, I was trying to tie this back into where we branched off on this conversation, uh, which is what's your name again? Will what Will asked uh, was what's the difference between BCH and uh, BSV, and it was this understanding of the importance of law, and um, yeah, that's and funny. and I think that the reason why the split happened was because they uh, they. They were saying it was philosophical in the sense that they were saying stupid things about how we don't need the government and all these ideals about this. And it was just, it was, it was uh, very short sighted, I think. And that's why the split happened. So that they sort of, of uh, are doing that agenda of trying to exist without law. And then BSV is more about how do we comply with law? I'm getting an incoming call. Um, Conway is law, by the way. I'd, that's the that's the name okay. of the thing that I Conway's law. I posted is, the is, link in the. Is it the same guy with the Conway Scam of Life? Is it the same guy or is it just the same name? Oh, it's a. Uh, I uh, don't oh, know. A, uh, I okay. don't know. Okay. Anyway, just a quick because when you say Conway, that's always my first impression. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When did you find out you could run Conway's? Uh, game of life in a uh, script that's saw. I uh, say that again I, I saw on the uh, on the medium that you could run mm -hmm. Conway's game of life in script mm -hmm. am I correct yes or no? yes yes because yeah what, there's been I think it was well it was uh, I think it was, I, if I remember correctly also it came with one of the of a few of the cracks uh, interview because he has been saying this you know Bitcoin has been turned complete, right? For a long, long time. But he even wrote a papers. But for me, I'm almost right. like, a, if he's like a, theoret a theoretical physicist, I'm almost like a experimental physicist kind of thing. Right. So I want to, right. even not only for, for to convince others, but also to convince myself, because I, I also want to do some, you know, something concrete to, to see if this theory is true or false, right? Because I want to find out. So I think uh, 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 there are a bunch of ways how you can, Tested theory, right? Why is to say it's like a, you 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 uh, you prove something is complete, complete. If you want to prove something is turn complete, there are two ways. First, you you run some system which is already turn complete on top of the thing, right? Let's say Bitcoin. Then that means by you know deduction, that means this thing like Bitcoin is also turn complete. So I 
you know, Craig has been talking about mostly two examples. One is uh, common schema life, and our second is the cellular automata, the Wolfram 110 rule. So th that's how I got the idea. And then we we're thinking, oh, how do I do this on, on top of Bitcoin? That's, that's how it came to be. And then when I first wrote it, I didn't explain it, say anything about Turing complete. And by then, I think I got Connor, Connor from uh, uh, Brightview. He was kind of, oh, you pretty much uh, actually, you didn't say this explicitly, but that's what you actually did. So then he wrote a long article in CoinGeek, which I recommend everybody to look. I think I also put it put on the chat box. He is saying, okay, this, this is like first empirical uh, demonstration that's, that is really Turing complete, right? So then later we'll also do the rule 110. So the latest one I did is, because even I published those two articles, which to me is like a definitive proof that the Bitcoin is turn complete, but still some people, you know, they kind of like if they're not computer science people, they're kind of like still a little bit of a, you know, not sure because they kind of have to trust us, right? So because these right. guys check my work and this guy seems trustworthy. So I still think there's some like a intermediary that involved. So when I came back from Miami, even when, when I was in Miami, people, just grab me by my shoulder. I said, "Hey, is it uh, is it really turn complete?" I said, "Sure, sure. Have you checked my video uh, or my article?" But they are not sure. That's why I did the, which I think is the final article on this series. We, I I just run the turn machines on top of Bitcoin. <laughs> That's why I'm saying, if you don't get it after reading this, sorry, I, I I that's the best I can do. I cannot convince you, or I don't have time to do it. So, so that's to me is like. Uh, the final definitive proof. If you, after reading that, and even put the main, main net transaction on, in the in the article, right? So that's something not theoretical. You can click and go to any blog explorer, and you can watch the Turing machine run step by step. As you, if you want to pay it, you just can trigger it step by step, right? So that's the definition of Turing complete, right? If you can run any Turing machines on top of the thing, then the thing is Turing complete. Right? That's the definition that you cannot even be. There's no ambiguity about that, or uh, even deduction. That's no. It's like uh, you, it's like you prove something is a number is even, right? You just divide the thing by two, and then if the remainder is zero, that's by definition, right? So that's um, yeah. to me, it's very clear. I don't know, but still, uh, Greg Maxwell, he post. I think somebody uh, forwarded to Hacker News, and then within one hour or two. He registered like a sock copy and then he was also doing the, all the attack work, which again, I think proved my point, right? <laughs> because if he, th he thinks that's a nothing burger, he wouldn't spend his uh, entire afternoon on a Sunday attacking that. So I think that's a win for us. <laughs> what are you guys thoughts? I agree. Yeah, that's a win. Uh, yeah, we win. Um, they lose. Uh, they're sorry. <laughs> I think it's nuts. I thought I thought um, Conway's game of life and like cellular automata is a very esoteric. Like mm -hmm. you don't really think about it much as like being very rep representative of like systems in the real world. So mm -hmm. it's like if you can run those systems in the Bitcoin, then it's like very plausible you could run other systems. So that is very mm -hmm. cool. It's, I don't know what those would be, but it's it's definitely a good sign. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah, the, the amazing thing about mm -hmm. these two simple systems, one is uh, the common scheme of life, the second is the cellular automata, the one, rule 110. It looks very simple, right? The rules is like you code a few lines, but actually is as powerful as the so-called Turing machine. And Turing machine, by our understanding, is the most powerful computing device. You can compute anything with it. So anything a computer mm -hmm. from even say in 1,000 years can compute this Turing machine. I also by by deduction this uh, uh, game of life and also rule 110 can also compute. But efficiency is a different issue, right? The Turing machine is always about the uh, computability. Whether you can compute it or not, it's not bad. But then Greg is always attack. Oh, it's not efficient. You know, if you want to just compute this number, you can you know code in something like a Python. But that's not the point, right? The point is to say, prove that what's the upper bound, what's the capability. Because all people, people always uh, say, even that I could even argue that right, the whole 
you know, so-called cryptocurrency exists by this, on this assumption, right? Because then, then if we prove this assumption is wrong, actually there's no legitimate reason for them to exist. And the funny thing is, I think that's one of the, if not the most important clue where I found out Nick Zabo is probably not, is definitely not Satoshi because he doesn't know this, right? So if somebody yeah. supposedly created this thing, he doesn't even know this is Turing complete, and then which is proven. That pretty sad, right? It's like a uh, you somebody, you know, Kevin invented uh, let's say a JavaScript, and then I was showing, oh, you can do like a website animation. He doesn't even know that. That's that's to me. That that means he's not the creator, right? <laughs> For sure. You know who my, uh, you want to know who my um uh call for Satoshi was? I gotta find his name. My it, it's probably not him, but you know, I just it's Craig. Don't ever miss it, oh, no, I know it's Craig. Uh, okay, okay. It's Craig. Oh, you're just I saying know. back in the day, back in the day, you're wondering. No, there was a guy, his name was Mohammed Atala, and he was a cryptographer and he created the uh, metal oxide semiconductor field transistor and he died Mosfet, in 2009. Yeah. But he was like a genius cryptographer, had all this stuff, and I'm like, mm. well, yeah, maybe. He died 2009, uh, right? But just thought you're still active after that. December so. 30th, December 30th, 2009. Okay, that can be him, right? Well, Satoshi, yeah, because Satoshi, Satoshi has posted. been active since whatever it was, 2011 or something, right? I forget. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's December twenty uh, ten, when uh, when the last post uh, where he said we had the uh, we just. Uh, kicked over the hornet's nest, uh, mm -hmm. something like that. And then uh, he also emailed with, uh, what's his Mike name? Her? I think it was Mike, Mike. Her in, uh, until uh, April of 2011. Um, okay. So he was still active, but but yes, I mean, interesting. That, that's, a, that's a good theory. It wouldn't, you know, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that's a good, uh, that, that's a good theory, but, but it's, sure. uh, it'll come out and it'll come out in due time with, with what people have so um, my father, my father lives um, in the same county as uh, David Kleiman's uh, family. Family did. Oh, nice. And um, so he he knew he knew of them, and what he was told was that it's like a nothing burger. His brother like, wrote over the hard drive. The coins gone. That simple. So like, I mean, I'm I'm willing to believe like that's probably like, could be a possibility of it. That there's just no Satoshi, you know. Bitcoin, and it was just an accident. We'll find yeah. out next month. Hopefully. People will, yeah, yeah. That, that, that stuff's gonna be talked about in more detail um, as time goes on. Uh, people, you know, people will talk about things in due time and, and tell the story in their own way, and uh, um, we'll we'll let that happen um, but as it as it as it comes about. Well, the whole other point, though, and this is a very important distinction, is that you are not your keys. And Craig just posted something about that with the uh, share. Yeah. If you lose your shares, if you lose your share certificate within a company, what's the way that you get it back? And uh, the, the headline was, you know, uh, if you lose your share certificate in a company, then do you still own the shares? Or another way of saying that is if somebody steals the keys to your car, is it still your car? It's your car. So uh People get very upset. Maybe this is another distinction between BCH and BSV. It's that you're not your keys. It's like you're not your social security number. You right. are the you are an actual a person, and then you have a social security number. You hope that there's a very strong tie and that you're the only one that knows that. But the reality is, is that you will never. Craig said something. It's like we don't have a microchip in your brain that knows if you're under duress or not. It's like. It's, it's not a problem that you can solve technologically. It's, uh, there's always going to be, what's the word for it he used? Uh, uh, I don't know what the right word is. Repudiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Non-repudiation. Whatever. Yeah, non-repudiation. Yeah, that's right. So there's, that's not a technical issue. You can't fix that with technology. That's always going to be something done between humans. You can create more evidence. You can record more stuff so that it's harder to fake in court because you have all this evidence of stuff. But at the end of the day, that's not a technological issue. That's something that humans decide between humans. Yeah, that's why I also, so, 
I like, I actually prefer the, you know, the, the human judge rather than some kind of like an algorithm because for algorithm, yeah. it's like robotic. Like, uh, you know, how, how do you even decide? And also if you strictly fo just follow, follow the so-called uh, instructions, it doesn't, you, you never cover all the like a complexity in the real world. Like some, let's say some car, right? Again, right, this is like a trolley experiment, right? Did you pull the trigger? So you kill five people or you want to save these 50 people? It's always, mm -hmm. uh, I, want, I really, I don't want a machine to be in call there. If my, my life is on stake, I, I actually want to stun my humans, which can, it's just <laughs> more similarity that he can, you know, feel passionate about, or it's even he a, has a, a agency. I don't math problems right. with people. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, it's like it's like it's inhumane. It's inhumane, literally, in the in the mm -hmm. sense that to not to just have algorithms running everything. But that's how these companies have always run Check their business. Adding, yeah. They try and mm -hmm. they you can't get on the phone and call somebody for customer support at Facebook or Twitter. You just get this. You just get this automated whatever, you know, Chat it's like they try whatever and, they built. They, yeah, they try and separate themselves as much as possible from actual people. It's like, and then you have this inhumane, destructive thing. And I get what they're trying to go for. They're trying to automate it as much as possible. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, it's humans interacting with humans mm -hmm. and technology should just make it easier. But we're not trying to get rid of humans. Because that's inhumane, literally. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it would be. And yeah. if, there, if there's not humans, um, <laughs> pretty uh, inhuman. Do yeah. cool, you know, I want to do something good in life. You know, give to charity. That's what I want to do. I want to make money. I want to give to charity. Peace of mind. Well, well, why, why? Okay. I, this is finally my opportunity to debate this with other people that maybe will be willing because nobody will have this debate with me. But why do you have to do that in that order? Why can't it just be that you're building a company and that is what you're doing good in the world? I don't know. I mean, as opposed to? As opposed to doing, of making money and then giving to charity. Because I always debate this with my parents, and uh, I, I was reading the Rockefeller, uh, I was reading the Foundation. Rockefeller uh, autobiography, and um, and you know, I mean, Standard Oil, sure, there was there's pollution or there's these things, but we wouldn't have our infrastructure that we have today without Standard Oil. All the cars that use the gasoline, and do you like your car or do you not? Uh, the airplanes, all this transportation, like Standard Oil did so, 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 so much good. Mm. It's literally the foundation of our country in many respects. And so to say that I didn't, or now he has to give back, what do you mean he has to give back? He just created this machine that supports the infrastructure of our whole country. Why does he have to go give to charity now? Why can't he spend that on, on himself? And the irony is, and having studied the health system, is that him giving to charity created this whole mess and is a huge killing system. So I, sorry, you're, I'm going to the moon. I'm getting over, uh, I'm overreacting a little bit, but uh, I, I just fundamentally disagree with the idea that you have to make money and then give to charity. I feel like you build a company and you try and make the company as humane as possible, but then that money is for you to spend on yourself and you don't need to give to charity. Or on expanding but the you can, company. I, or, or on expanding the company, exactly. Exactly. You should use it on expanding the company. But because um, the company itself is should be a humane thing that's producing something that is of value. So uh, yeah, so sorry, sorry to pick on you. Well, I didn't mean to pick on you, but... Uh, no, it, that's just my opportunity to say that publicly because I thought about it for a long time. Go ahead. Well, I mean, well, here's my question: is like, what if what if what you do doesn't provide much value, but people have fun with it, and you make a lot of money? You know, like uh, gambling or something. I mean, well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I look at these big crypto exchanges that offer a lot of leverage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could say that, you know, they're the reason crypto doesn't 
accelerate with the adoption because there's always that like all right they all need to get the floor dropped out on them the whole market has to tank and then we can just grow from this like pure speculative era because we all know i mean my thing is like i like bsb because it wants to scale that's the primary concern and for like what i want to do with you know in this it needs to so that's where i see myself fitting in and that's going to have a long-term thing whereas like other projects ethereum chain links i don't know what they'll do but their primary focus isn't on scaling and building a business is doable in this ecosystem it seems like yeah know. um there was the question i lost what i thought but you started off answering that and i wanted to talk about it um in terms of the uh it was the charity topic oh oh, oh this is what i was gonna say no i remember i remember i think that i and i thought about this a lot i think that giving to charity is actually okay so and but but basically i was just saying well, but, but, hold, hold on let me let me just finish this thought before because i'm really temp i lose my train of thought if people interrupt me too much um shit, what was i saying oh yeah so the best okay so the money that you gain the best way of using it isn't or the best way of using it is to invest in long-term projects that aren't immediately profitable. And so, but it should have, and this is the thing that's bad with charities is that they aren't self-sustainable. So, um, so you, in many ways, disempower the person because they don't have any way of sustaining themselves. They need to go beg somebody else eventually later. So, um, but if, but, but, if you give money freely to a charity that's researching something or is doing something that helps and it'll contribute to a long-term thing eventually, I need to articulate this better. And I'm afraid that if I don't word this properly, people are going to like destroy me because it sounds so terrible not to give to charity. But, um, but uh, so I'll stop talking and think about how to phrase this better. I but let me, if let me you reply. invest, let me okay, go ahead. Okay. Is that there are, organizations you can give to that ultimately aren't going to do anything with it of any value now what i would say if i had all the money in the world you say all right here's this money what charity are you going to give to i would say hmm let's go to education reform because maybe there's a way that people are being taught right now from a fundamental level that is not going to promote their success for a changing world versus like giving a bunch of money to an lbtq or something like that that's just an example okay Fair enough. And I would say, I would say, and, and this is, and so I'm agreeing with you. And, and what I'm saying is that the mechanism of doing that is by investing in education, you're investing it in long-term. It's not, it's not a short-term profit, but by, by having human capital or by having educated people, that's a long-term investment in society itself. And so I agree that that's, that's a good way of giving to charity. But the problem is sometimes is that people don't actually like you might give it to an education endowment and then they go and they teach crazy things and they indoctrinate people in a disempowered way. So you have to make sure that they're following the right uh, path to you, to what you wanted in terms of education. But yeah, I think I, that's a good way of giving, giving away money. But you're investing in long-term, you're always investing. And what you're doing is you're investing in long-term health of society by having more educated people. I just think of people in a situation of if I was a younger person, where if I had somebody that could have gave me the guidance that I needed at the time, if I can offer that to somebody else in society through whatever I can give, then that's a, that's a net positive to me. I don't even have to see it actually happen, mm -hmm. but if me by doing something results in that, that's a good thing, you know? For sure. Yeah. And it feels good to help people, so it's good. But you wanna actually help them. You don't, you don't wanna disempower them. And a lot of times giving money away to, to a beggar, you're actually reinforcing them begging. You want to reinforce them actually being self-deficient. It's to teach yourself how to fish versus uh, fish, whatever metaphor. Give a man a fish Bible. versus, uh, yeah, versus yeah, 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 exactly, uh, exactly. teach him to fish or something. Exactly. Because um, yeah. what is it? You give a man a fish, he, he, he eats for a day. If you teach him to fish, he eats for the rest of his life. Um, that, 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 that applies. And money in the capitalist system is a trust given to those who have become the most successful 
uh, by society, right? It's a trust given to them by society that they will they will use it to, you know, of course, um, uh, benefit themselves and those they care about uh, uh, personally, but to serve the longer term interest, right? The more money you have, the more ability you have to spend it in a wiser way. On if I have five dollars, the, probably the wisest thing I could do is save it for later. Um, if I have, you know, uh, but the point is the shorter amount of money, the shorter term it is in terms of what it's, what its utility is. But if I have $4 billion, um, I can do research that benefits people for, you know, or I can do what standard oil did, or I can do, uh, I, I have the ability to do all of this research. Uh, I've given money right. to people personally, and usually what happens is, hey, can I borrow 20 bucks? Here's 20 bucks. Fine. That's, you know, I, I can I can do that. Hey, can I have $60 uh, a month later? Hey, can I have uh, $200 a month later? And then, you know, that 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 really is not. So people people think, oh, well, if I sorry, I'm just seeing um, here. Uh, let's see. Uh, if I if I. If I give people, let's see, oh, I was saying, if I have money and everyone thinks, oh, well, you could just give it to people who need it, right? You could give it away. You could, you could help. You could empower people. But you're not empowering people by doing that. You're disempowering them. Um, and, and the best way to spend money is to, given a certain amount of money, figure out how you could spend it in the most long-term way possible without running out and failing at what you're trying to do on something. And, uh, and for that amount of money, uh, figure out something you want to research or something you want to, you want to build a business that you want to create to solve a problem. And people think, oh, well, I'll create a business. And then using the money I get from that business, I will then be able to solve these, these moral, social problems, whatever, give money away, empower people, et cetera, et cetera. But that's wrong, I think. What you have to do is create a business that does those things. Use your business as the machine and as the vehicle that is going to solve the things that you want to solve. Because once you can do that, then your business is generating revenue. And when you get that revenue, you can put it right back into the business and then make it more powerful at solving and achieving the things that you want to achieve as, as far as um, creating solutions to, you know, I guess, problems that we see, right? So if I believe that people are not being educated, I could start a, a private university and then I could educate people better and then I could make money from that. But when I make that money, the most efficient use of that money because I'm doing something I believe in is to spend it right back on that business and to grow it and to make it into something which is going to provide even more benefit in that same way. And so exactly. people have the chicken and the egg mixed up. Okay, I think that's, 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 the, way, that's the way I see it at least. Okay, I think okay. there is an aspect to 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 philanthropy and, oh, what, what? Um, and charitable giving that I that I think is often um, in in discussions like this, right, where I think there is an implicit assumption about the benefits of capitalism, um, might end up um, getting overlooked. And the specific thing that I want to talk about is the fact that. Even if we had perfect capitalism, what we have now is a very distorted, um, often referred to as a crony capitalist okay. system, massively distorted uh, through the interference of uh, personal agendas in political processes that end up uh, twisting the markets and distorting our, our, our capitalist agenda, right? So even, in, even, and even if we had perfect capitalism, I think that there would still, in the way that markets fluctuate, you would end up finding local minima and local maxima. And typically at these points of extremity, either in local communities or in uh, local towns or wherever, uh, or just in a person's individual life, you'll end up with local capitalist maxima or minima, which would be an extreme event that unless there is some way for them to get caught, they end up falling through the cracks in such a hard way it makes it nearly impossible for them to get back up again, regardless of whatever um, systems are in place to empower them, which means that these people will end up by no fault of their own quite often, but quite often also through fault of their own, but that is not really the point, right? But you will end up with a large, if you have billions of people in the world, you will end up with tens of billions of people in a perfect capitalist system 
that are essentially falling through the cracks and then it becomes not a point, then it becomes basically a point, a question of um, what is the humane thing to do? How do we assist these people in a way that is going to incur a net loss for the giver? Somebody is going to incur a net loss with zero expectation, should have zero expectation of a return. And in that instance, the idea there should purely be this person can't be allowed to suffer because, you know, humanity. Yeah. Um, and this is the way that I like to think about charitable giving and, um, and any sort of okay. uh, social impact that, that, that one, one would make, want to make in the world, uh, where I don't believe that everything can be solved simply by, by, by capitalism or starting a business. Mm -hmm. here's, the, here's good news. Actually, you can do both, right? Together, it's not a, it's not a dichotomy. You see what I mean? Yeah. You can do two ways, right? If you have $1 billion, you can, you know, like a tie on the Kevin, you can invest in whatever business that you already get this money from, mm -hmm. or you are like, a, I don't know, Stefan and uh, William, you can, if some, let's say some kids is starving today in Zimbabwe, it's probably not going to, you know, if you say, hey, can I get an education first, whatever, he's starving today. So you probably just, just get some, him, uh, some free food or some free medicine today, right? So the good thing is you can split the one billion, whatever it's, it is. I feel it's like a subjective call. You can do whatever you want and uh, it's your money, right? At the end of the day, so, yeah. but uh, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both be happy. I, <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that, I think I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think you can do both, but uh, I just I wanted can. to challenge. I wanted to challenge that notion because I think people they don't realize how much value these people are creating yeah. by creating it's a always company a, like Standard Oil or like Amazon. Yeah. Mm. I agree. It's always that you have you your built own. this, and now you got to give back. Yeah, that's that's also. It doesn't own anything. It's like a, it's almost like a John God, right? <laughs> we we don't we mm. don't own you anything. It's like a, even in some uh, crypto, you know, especially in crypto, right? So it's, if sometimes the price is not going up, and then people are like, oh, you, you you, it's almost like you own this high price BSV or whatever coins you have. If you have not delivered as you promised, they get angry for whatever reason. But as as far as I can remember, when when you buy Bitcoin, uh, BSV, right? Uh, I don't remember I signing some contract with uh, either Craig or Calvin or whoever saying, oh, this price is going over. Otherwise I can, <laughs> I can sue you, right? I don't remember I signed that contract. So unless you show me that contract, it, to me it's, uh, it's all voluntary. Right? Yeah. So I think here, that's- yeah, a good I, mean, I do yeah, agree yeah. with you, Kevin. I, sorry, Kevin, I do agree with you on, on the topic that folks should stop demanding that um, there's this idea of we should hang the rich, right? Mm. Um, we should. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that that that's a that's a nonsensical idea. Those people create tremendous amount of value. Uh, they create jobs. They, they 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 benefit society tremendously. And the reward for future inventors and beneficiaries of capitalist beneficiaries of society is exactly the fact that you get to keep um, the you keep a commensurate. The amount of money that ends up in your pocket invariably ends up being commensurate with the value creation, right? The more value you create, the more money that ends up in your pocket. So uh, people tend to look at it one-sidedly and think, oh, you've got a lot of money in your pocket. Let's tax that money out of your pocket. <laughs> Right. But I acknowledge and I, I acknowledge what you said. And I actually agree. I just didn't. It was so hard. Everybody wants to speak at once. I couldn't I couldn't just confirm it right when you said it. But I agree that we have to acknowledge that the capitalist system is never going to be perfect. And so giving to charity is sort of an acknowledgement that, hey, yeah. it's not a perfect system. You've done a lot, but maybe you didn't get rewarded for it. And I also wanted to say I had so many things I wouldn't wanted to say. But I also wanted to say that gambling, if you look back at the history of gaming and gambling, and people don't people think gaming is just a total waste, but it actually isn't. It was a way of redistributing capital. Uh, and we were acknowledging that it's not perfect. And so the Indians would have, uh, they'd have the Native Americans, I should say, they had a way of playing these games where, you know, we're going to leave it to, to the divine or we're going to leave it to chance. But, you know, they didn't believe there's chance. We're going to leave it to whatever the divine spirit to distribute this in a way that's actually is correct. <laughs> 
And so uh, that's kind of a funny way of doing gaming. I said that before. I said, how do we redistribute money? And I say, well, gambling. And people look at me like I'm crazy, but I think that's how, that's how I've always, always viewed it. But the problem is, is that people get superstitious and then they play, they play way more casino games and stuff than they should and they waste all their money. And so it gets out of balance. And so gaming has to be regulated, I, I believe. But because uh, if you just have a bunch of people like in Cuba where they're, everybody played the lottery, but nobody's producing goods and services, then you have a problem with that. So, like so uh, my self-regulation is great like if we all know what's the right thing to do we can all agree it's the right thing to do we don't need someone coming in and being like hey, 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 hey what are you guys doing you know so well, yeah. we got well just i think i think education and acknowledgement that hey look you know goods and services is the wealth of society not money and so even if you want a bunch of money you what are you going to do to create are you going to create goods and services are you going to benefit society because if all of us are sitting on an island and we, nobody is producing anything and we're just gambling then we're all gonna we're not going to grow as a civilization but the acknowledgement that capital doesn't always go to those that have contributed the uh the most so you can give to charity as a way of um as a way of letting the capital redistribute to those who somehow got left out of the system. But I'm also saying that uh, gaming was, if you look at the history of gaming, that's how it was, uh, that, that was introduced. That's how it was uh, came to being, at least from my understanding, I'm not a perfect historian. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, it's not a perfect system and there's, you have to redistribute capital just to acknowledge that, let some, some steam out of the system because people think they were treated unfairly and they need uh, a way of letting out that steam. Otherwise they'll revolt and tear down society. I think capitalism is a pretty good system though. It definitely yeah, it's the best we have so far. I've been doing pretty good. It's the worst think... system of all, except for all the others. <laughs> pretty much. It's, yep. it's essentially right. People always, uh, Say, oh, it's not uh, perfect. Of course, nothing is perfect, right? There's, maybe never. It's not not only we haven't found it yet. Perfection is not perfect. Yes, and also different people have different uh, definition for perfect, right? You think, oh, everybody has should be have the same, uh, you know, uh, income or whatever, right? That's your opinion of perfect. But we think, or maybe a lot of us think, the more value uh, goods and service you create, right, then you the more you should have. That, but that's our definition of perfect. But you know, that's everybody is uh, have uh, my perfection is different from your per perfection. So that's never, it's never a uh, attainable goal, even by definition. <laughs> yeah. So I like the that's yep. the meme on the internet that's always saying, it's like oh, if it's a uh, if a capitalist capitalist country is so bad, why is always the socialist escaping that country coming to this capitalist country? You never see, I don't know how many Florida people, you know, they go to Cuba, you know, in groups. I, I, I don't know. It's just maybe the news not coming out anything. But I'm always seeing one direction. Right? I kind of see this uh, also in crypto. Uh, that's also, it's one of my, I take it as, as an indication, but it's not always true. But if you see the different coins, right? If you have two coins, the people just moving from one coin to the other coin, but never come back. That's almost like, uh, it's a very strong signal. I wouldn't say it's always right. It's like BSV, right? How many people uh, get from other coin to BSV? How many people leave BSV to join other coin? I, I think maybe it's just me. I, I don't know many or, or anyone. Do you do you guys know any? Kevin, you join Sonona some, sometime soon or? Uh, I don't know. No, <laughs> yeah, this, not doing proof almost, of stake, sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, they use, no, uh, what is that? Proof of history or whatever. But it's, yeah, it's just a different term. I'm in it for the long haul, BSV all the way. Uh, I don't know anybody who's not. Uh, I've talked to some people in Bitcoin Cash who uh, are starting to think about things a little bit. Okay. And maybe they're headed, the, I don't know, we'll see. But no, nobody's, nobody I've talked to has actually left BSV and said, this is, you know, this is why I'm leaving. It's flawed. It's broken. It's bad. It doesn't work. It doesn't scale. Like, if they're here and if they've actually built something with it, they realize that it's it's the right way to go. And once you realize that, and once you come to accept the way the world works, um, I mean, there's people that know the way the world works and they they accept it and they, they're here and 
they're not going anywhere. Like these people aren't going anywhere. I don't think anybody on this call is going anywhere and planning to just, you know, make an exodus out of, out of VSV. Like um, go maybe Unwriter made a joke of it. He, like, yeah, where, where would you go? Are you going to go to BTC and, and have one megabyte blocks? Um, I mean, maybe Unwriter jokingly published this Medium article and it said the resolution of the Bitcoin SV experiment. And he says, oh, I'm, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Uh, you guys, you guys all serve me well, but it was just a joke. It was April Fool's Day. Uh, so that's the closest oh, I can think of. Oh, anyway. somebody I mean, really wrote a, somebody wrote this article yesterday. Did you see? Uh, a res resolution of the Bitcoin SV experiment by, uh -huh. let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, I saw uh, it, but it's not by our writer though. It isn't? No, I don't. I, I thought he not... made an article in, on media. Oh, that's that's huh. not him. No, that's called a wire okay. term, this guy. I don't know who this guy is, but I can, sh I, I can share it in a group. Yeah, okay. I saw it yesterday, yeah. Wire term, this guy, I don't know him. Uh, I can't see the screen. Right? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Sandy, in the oh, Slack. Yeah. In the Slack. Oh, okay. I'm on my I'm on my iPad, so I can't see the uh, chat. Uh, okay. Oh, you'll put yeah, the you Slack. Can. Okay. Yeah, Slack. Yeah. I'll check it out after. So, mm -hmm. so do we have NFTs um, on uh, BSV yet? Because I um I just uh I just made some nice nice piece of art. Mm -hmm. I think our relay X relay X. I tried to use it, and then I couldn't. Uh, figure out the, the the workflow of how to do it. But uh, RelayX had something where you could upload an image instantly and I wanted to do it and I didn't. But uh, there's, I, look, everything is poss possible here. It's, uh, and, and the way that I see it, I'm never leaving, like this is Craig's invention. It's like he, he it's like the LED, the guy that created the LED lights. He patented all this stuff all around it because he had this huge vision and there's like all of his patents all work together. Like, and the reason he made the patents is like to show this is how you use it. And you know, he, he, the person couldn't even, there's no possible way he could have implemented all of his ideas. There's so many patents. And so he, there needs to be people to help implement these ideas. And so for me, I see this as Craig's invention and I, align with it in so many ways of stuff that I want to do personally and would be doing otherwise. And I can't, I couldn't have done a lot of this stuff without BSV. And so just out of respect to the person that created it, I'm always, uh, I mean, unless it's like he turns evil and takes advantage of people, which I just don't see happening um, and, you know, going crazy, then I'm never going to leave. So yeah, back okay. to a win, so, yeah. William question. I think a uh, round token has NFT solutions and also Sensible has also. I'm not sure about the money button. Do you, do you guys know, do, do they have a, I'm sure they have a fungible tokens, but uh, I'm SFP, not sure. I think. Do, do they have a know. NFT solution? Uh, yeah, uh, it's implemented. So so when Fabric took, so when, when they got bought over by Fabric and money button got bought by Fabric, Fabric uh, implemented a token API, which integrates well with the money button. Um, I'm just trying to remember if it's if it's directly in the money button SDK. Um, I think it's in the money button JavaScript library. Yeah, check it out. Can directly yeah. In, yeah. Yeah. Um, money button. Um, it's 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 quite a rich JavaScript API for working directly with with uh, with um, tokens inside of your money button wallet. Yeah. And also, this is what I was talking about. I finally found it. So on RelayX, you download RelayX, and there's the Relay Exchange. And I press this button, and then it has all of these uh, all of these things that have been uploaded. And then you press right here the plus button, right. that. and then it says Mint. Yeah. And then there's the NFT, okay. and then you have to drag and drop an image right there. Okay. So. So I was thinking I, I might I might try and like create something like um, with what Engine's doing with how they have the uh, the non fungible tokens and fungible token mints, you know, and, and offering those services mm -hmm. on BSV because um, you know I'd like to I'd like to be able to bring like everything I was working on over at Engine and work on it at a productive level over here as I was over there. I mean that 
engine is a is like a gaming engine or what, what is that? I'm not familiar no, with the game gaming thing. They have their own crypto cryptocurrency and that was engine coin and it was a engine. very unique concept of like minting each fungible token with pieces of engine and then adding these unique uh you know fee structures and they, they, they had some good stuff over there i can't discredit them on that but then they created another token called affinity and then they just stopped responding to people in the discord and then I said, oh my God, you can't scale on Ethereum. And then the project stopped. And then my dad's left. But then I found out about this. So now, you know. Cool. Welcome. Right Welcome. You know, I'm <laughs> grateful. I'm grateful. How, just curious, how did you how did you find out uh, about uh, BSV? What's your so, journey? Um, I found out about BSV because I remember when uh, they split from BCH. Mm -hmm. And I just remember how like badly people were like thrashing them. And I'm like, why? I'm like, why? Like, what, what do they do? So, so then I was just looking for like solutions of scalability in crypto, if there's actually like anything. And it just seemed in terms of like, I talked to this guy, Attila, who worked on the super asset token. And he made it abundantly clear to me that satoshi is what you want your denomination of any sort of like video game item to fall back to as far as like audibility as far as value a lot of different things as opposed to like ethereum engine coin tether any of that stuff so when he said that to me i said okay like well are there fungible tokens are there non-fungible tokens on bsv then that started popping up a little bit and I started looking, you know, seeing what's available. I mean, it just seems now there's going to be a lot of like stuff I need to build myself that was already built for me on those platforms, which is fine. Like, you know, if it gets done, it gets done. But that's the only hurdle, you know, working with BSV right now. Yeah. Like, I know it can work when we transact it, just the tools that they have. Yeah, that's the that's the thing I said, Kurt uh, Worker. Is it Walker or Walker? Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Jr. Yeah, I'll just say Kurt. Kurt. Yeah, Kurt, yeah, Kurt Jr. I'll just say, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Sorry, Kurt. But uh, Kurt asked me, uh, what was the advantage that Ethereum had? And I said, better tooling. They just have everything like mm -hmm. set up already. But 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 it's but it's uh, it's not foundationally supported. So it's like little Legos, but we're trying to build a skyscraper. So yeah, you can build little things in the sand on Ethereum, but it's in the sand and it's going to collapse. And so uh, we're building like strong infrastructure that can support a really big foundation. I think that was one of the first things Craig uh, was saying. It's like, you know, he's worked with like exchanges like in Australia, I think like you have to have huge, huge amounts of volume in order to support an exchange. And so when he insults a company like Coinbase and makes one of them, like it's because they're not even, they just, they're not sound structurally. Uh, it's a, it's a but it has a good user interface and it has this kind of stuff. So, you know, like I admire the user interface and I do that. I, you know, I admire that stuff, but they just don't have the strong foundation. So what you're saying in terms of, yeah, you have to build stuff, you do, but we're trying to build a strong, solid thing. And so it just takes longer. It's the tortoise and the hare. Every day, every day. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it just because I still, you know, I think uh, I, I would never have gotten here if I didn't like step into engine and see like the very, very interesting ways that they offered uh, fee structuring through like, you know, swaps, uh, atomic swaps, you know, advanced sends and things like that. And that, then I said, oh my God, like maybe there's a way to like replicate a floor trading process with like a low capital environment where like trading on Coinbase, you could have $10 million on Coinbase and get blown up, no problem. Whereas like if you were say like a floor trader or something back in the day, you probably don't have $10 million on you on the floor, just, just trading it. You have whatever you have. So there's this level of like regulatory bodies don't want people getting crushed because they get manipulated and then dumped on for very, very large sums of money. 
I look at trade as free. I think free trade is a great thing because there's a competitive side to it. There's a information side to it. There's a patient side to it. There's a lot of like, you can do a lot of things to like not lose, you know? And my whole thing is there's fun in winning. So if you can just do something that is, it feels good you do, when you're doing it, having fun doing it because you're winning at it. And even if you take some losses in it, whether it be like a couple bucks here or there, you know. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. Yeah. That's all right. We're yeah, good. I think uh, the, it's just going to take longer to build the infrastructure. And so I think we should get to work and start doing stuff. I really enjoy this conversation, guys. We, I think we're mm -hmm. about at two hours, so we'll probably wrap okay. it up. So, yeah, cool. All right, guys. That's it. Any closing thoughts, quick? <laughs> if not, we can just uh, meet the next Friday. Right. Oh, after. Well, coin, let's see. Coin, coin Geek's coming up. So mm -hmm. that's going to be busy next week. And I'm so excited yeah. to watch everything. Yeah. I don't know if I, I wish able I could make it next week, but um, definitely. Yeah, uh, really. Yeah, it's, it'll, be, uh, it'll be good to see everybody. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, it was really exciting to go. But now they have New York City have this uh, vaccine thing. That's why Kevin and me cannot go. Yeah, that's yeah. I, but that will be online. So, what what are the most exciting things you guys are looking forward to in this uh, conference? I think for me, I can just start. Definitely the turnout. Let's say if they can break, I don't know, five hundred thousand uh, transaction per second, that will be my. I don't know. That's my will be my Christmas anyway. Well, what thought, are you guys? The, Jimmy uh, went to an interview about the name and it's a, it's a cool, it's really, cause I was, I was wondering about it. The title is it's about time and they're in Times Square. Oh, and okay. uh, it ha yeah, if you think about that, it's in Times Square. I don't, but anyways, it's a good, uh, it's, uh, and that's kind of what Bitcoin's about. We have the time uh, stamp server. So it's a time chain. It is, it is about, about time. time. Yeah, it's about time. It's just a fun metaphor. So the, the whole theme was it's about time. And then also it's about time for people to catch up for uh, understanding this. And so it was a good interview with Jimmy Wynn. If you look at it, it's on Coin Geek. I just watched it yesterday. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. I was laughing. People might misunderstand why I was laughing when you're talking about it. But we were talking about New York City and I just, I was, we were joking about the, uh, so anyways, it's just a funny video we watched. It's kind of gross. I don't want to bring it up, but. Uh, but yeah, I, I really wish I wanted to be in New York and uh, it's really a bummer, but uh, it's great. We have the virtual stuff and I actually absorb, I really do absorb more over the internet than I do in person because when I'm in person, it's, there's just, I'm very uncomfortable sometimes or I have to use a restroom and I can't get up because I don't interrupt people and that kind of stuff. So I absorb more from home, but I, I really like meeting people in person and uh, networking that way. So I wish I could have gone, but they're not letting us unless we get our vaccine. And I'm not against vaccines, but I just don't uh, think it's necessary with this. And I also don't agree that we should have mandated medicine. I think people should be voluntary. It's it's crazy. I was watching it and it's like, we want 99% compliance or is what Biden said the other day. And I'm like, oh my God, what if there's a problem with this vaccine? Has And I'm not saying there is, but like just theoretically, right. what if there was a problem with the vaccine and we vaccinated 99% of the population? Do you realize how stupid that is? And what about natural immunity? All throughout the past, we've acknowledged that there's natural it immunity. Exist, man. And now suddenly there's, no, yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. We need 100% compliance. It's like, this This is like genocide stuff. In my, and sorry to get on, I don't want to, I, I don't think yeah. it is, okay? I think the vaccine is safe. We're I, going I to upload safe, this to but YouTube, just saying, so we don't want to be yeah, well, they, politically they, correct. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. But I'm just, I, I don't think it is, by the way. And that's what I'm saying. I don't think it is. But I'm just saying, what if there was a problem? So this is why we don't force things on people. Shahoy, if you want to upload this to Nanostore uh, instead of YouTube, it won't get censored. Um, so, so you can upload this I on Nanostore if you want. No, no, no. Um, uh, Rambo. This is the simple solution. You buy Bitcoin SV, you never sell it. You yeah, and you could also just okay. cut it off at the end. You could just you could trim that part before you publish it. But I don't think it'll get censored. I've heard that on YouTube before. Yeah, so. if it does, we have yeah. NanoStore, so you can use. And it. I and by the okay. way, I said and I truly believe I don't think it's a problem. I'm just saying fundamentally, what if it was? Yeah. And so by me not getting it, 
I already had natural immunity and I'm just saying, I'm entertaining the possibility to people, what if there was a problem? And I've gotten vaccines in the past, I'll probably get them in the future if I have to be travel in Africa. Like I'm not against vaccines uh, at all, but I just don't think, I, I disagree with the mandated part. That's the only thing I disagree mm -hmm. with. And I, I really wanted to go, I already yeah, bought yeah. tickets, mm -hmm. I bought two tickets. And it's just a bummer. So I don't know. If they change it before Monday, I'll probably go. But mm -hmm. I, now I, yeah. I don't want to. We'll see. I'm doing the presentation. Yeah, we'll see. So yeah, yeah. yeah. they change it. I'm uh, also going. There's always but, another uh, time. But otherwise, right, uh, guys. Ty and uh, William, you guys are going, right? So you can connect. Sure. Yes, That'd sir. be good. good. That's good uh, representation. Okay. Very good. We'll <laughs> okay, guys. Together. Okay. All right, guys. Enjoy I'm going to jump off at this point, but thank you, guys. Okay. So, Enjoy. Okay. See you Good next time. And, uh, Enjoy, Kongi. Uh, I'll see you guys okay. in two weeks. Okay. All right. See you. Bye, guys. See you guys. See you guys. Enjoy the rest bye. of the day. Okay. Bye, bye. Stefan.